Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who have now to his temple draw near, join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who all, all things so wondrously reigning. She led thee under his wings, he is so gently sustaining. Hast thou not seen how thy desires there have been granted in what he ordained? Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he befriend thee. Number 21. Immortal, invisible, could only want, enlightened, accessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of this, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, no wanting, no wasting, the rule is in mind. Thy justice like mountains high soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish like leaves on the tree. Then wither and perish, but no change in thee. Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all fail in their sight. O oh Lord, we would render, O oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light by the Number two, zero, twenty. Oh, praise ye the Lord, praise him in the high. Rejoice in his word, the angels of light. The heavens adore him, by whom he was made. And worship before him in brightness of Oh, praise ye the Lord, praise him upon earth. In tuneful accord, ye sons of new birth, praise him who had brought you his grace from above. And praise him who taught you to sing of his love. Oh, praise ye the Lord, all things that give sound. Each jubilant chord re echoes around. Lord, the organs his glory foretell in deep tones. And sweet have the story of what he had done. Oh, praise ye the Lord, thanksgiving and song. 
To him be outpoured all ages alone. For love in creation, for heaven restored. For grace of salvation, oh, praise the Lord. Anyone has a song they want us to sing? Okay, you think five, three, one, we'll build on the rock. We'll build on the rock, the living rock, of Jesus, the rock of ages. So shall we abide the fearful shock when love the tempest rages. We will build on the rock. We were built on the rock. We were built on the rock, on the solid rock, on Christ the mighty rock. I'm built on the sinking sands of life, on visions of earthly treasure. Some build on the waves of sin and the strife of fame and worldly pleasure. We'll be on the rock. We'll be on the rock. We'll build on the rock, on the solid rock. On Christ the mighty rock, O oh, build on the rock forever sure, the firm and the true foundation. Its hope is the hope which shall endure, the hope of our salvation. We'll be on the rock, we'll build on the rock, we'll build on the rock, on the solid rock, on Christ the mighty rock. Amen. Praise the Lord. You think one eight four? One eight four. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper spot And melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Since nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garment white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And when before the throne, I stand in him complete. I lay my trophies down 
Fall down at Jesus' feet. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise and good morning to all. But Elijah, the time goes a lot. It is yours. Oh, good morning and praise the Lord. Well, let's see. Now. Let's see. Sister, Sister Michelle. Hello, Sister Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> it is a pleasure to, to speak to you. Could you give us a brief overview of what we discussed the last time we're together? Okay. Yes, I can. Um, <clears throat> good morning. So last time we um, met, we met on Sabbath. Um, we really discussed uh, in the morning session, the divinity of God, um, that we, we really picked out the fact that nothing can happen without his divine hand and how the enemy is really trying to, to counterfeit that. And we went into discussion in terms of how he does that or how the world right now, how, how, how this is happening or the world think, is thinking that they can or don't need God. We talked a little bit about um, how, or we used genetics and, and people that are trying to change their, their sex <clears throat> uh, um, and genetics, how that is a form of how people think that they can take the place of God, um, but nothing can really take the place of God. And so we use that in order to say the counterfeit of Satan. Satan can't come as a as a human being, only Jesus was able to come as a human being. Only part of <clears throat> the one third of the Godhead was able to do that, <clears throat> and truly has um, the ability to be able to save us because <clears throat> he came as a human as he, as a human being. But but Satan is going to try to counterfeit that, um, and we walked through that extensively. We looked at. Um, uh, Leviticus in terms of the day of atonement and this this as as our as our backdrop of this counterfeit that's that's going to happen. And we talked about how when Jesus came, he came as a sinful as a sinful uh, with sinful nature. Um, again, this giving credence to his ability um, or the Godhead able to able to save us. Um, we talked a little bit about, um, or we, 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 sh we shared that in the framework of the Immaculate Conception when Mary wasn't perfect. So the idea of the Immaculate Conception is, is a falsehood because again, it was only uh, Jesus came as a sinful man and, and Mary wasn't, wasn't sinful. I mean, Mary couldn't claim herself as to be sinful because she was human. Um, we looked at uh that sinful nature um and and we looked also and and really trying to give framework to this sinful nature we talked about how sometimes the, the um we we take we don't take the bible at at face value so for example um at the garden of eden god never said that um the the, the death that that Adam and Eve would face if they disobeyed would be the, the fact that they would spiritually die. But the Bible was very clear that um, that there would be death. But but they pushed, and like we do as human beings, we try to push the line um, by saying, "Oh well, you know, there was no death. I didn't die." Um, when they ate the fruit, um, they pushed that line, not understanding what the Bible is really trying to say. And the fact that Jesus came to, to save us um, to, uh, from, from death um, and, and what 
and, and the steps that he took, understanding the steps that he took in order to do that. Um, and and uh, the steps being the, the, the shedding of blood for the remission of sin. And we talked about that extensively. In the second chapter, in the second session, which was a marathon session, I, I came in late. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. Um, but it was a I came in a little late. Um, but we talked about, um, we really looked back, we, we went into great controversy. Um, we talked about, or when I got here, we were talking about, um, uh, uh, from what I understood, part of that, still talking about part of that counterfeit, but uh, we started looking at um, a Dan a, a Daniel and um, or in Acts, the women possessed and speaking of the disciples, Paul cast out spirits. Satan was using reverse psychology when the enemy has the king, has the king for good thoughts. Um, how God teaches us, uh, you know, and, and he gives us the, the opportunity that we have now because if God knew, and, and this is a lie that people think, oh, especially uh, Pentecostals, they think, um, that if they have, if they can make it through the seven, um, that with the rapture, there's no, uh, for those that are here and remain here through the seven, through the seven plagues that, you know, there, there would be another, another opportunity for them to be saved, but that's falsehood. That's a falsehood that, that people believe. We talked extensively about how God and his cycle, you know, time, time is, is of no nature. Uh, time only began when, when that sinful nature began. And God, when he looks at time, he has a, a weekly and monthly cycle. Um, and we looked at it through Revelations and through Genesis and, and trying to break down the lamb, um, the lamb, the, the, the sacrifice of the lamb, the sacrifice of the heifer, um, and, and, and what does that really mean? When God created the planet, um, he gave us that, we looked at that theoretical look and that practical look, and what, it, what does that really mean? Um, as far as the plan of redemption, we talked about the plan of redemption um, very, very extensively. And the plan of redemption wasn't just for humanity, it was also for the, for the, um, for the planet, which I just never knew. I never understood that until, until Sabbath. Um, and we discussed the plan of redemption and the specifics in terms of um, looking at Daniel and then looking at Revelation, looking at Leviticus, the role of the priest, the role of the day of, the, of, the day of atonement, um, and, and explaining the ram and the heifer. We talked about um, this particular look um, with using Abraham, Isaac, and uh, Abraham, Isaac, and 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 the ram. Um, uh, the God, the Father, actually took took you know uh, did the, did the deed, um, and Isaac was actually the human race that was able to to uh, come to escape to escape the death, but that Jesus was the ram who took who took um, to who took death for us. And, um, we talked that, that was really just uh, the, your explanation, just really going down and really explaining that role. There's two worshipers and which worshiper are we going to be going to take, to, which worshiper are we going to be? Um, and then we just talked a lot about history in terms of the five core churches that every religion came from, um, how we're able to see uh, what's going to happen in, in, in the future in terms of um, apostate Protestantism, um, what sets SDA apart um, um, with the spirit of prophecy, and um, uh, I think that's it. I mean, everything else is just your explanation using, using Daniel, Revelation, going back to Genesis. Mm -hmm. Praise ye the Lord. <laughs> you know, uh, were there any questions or any comments that you had, Sister Michelle, from what we were talking about? Anything that we needed to address? 
Um, I think we looked at, and I wasn't able, I had asked for the, the, the recording last, uh, yesterday. I wasn't able to, re to listen to it. And I think your explanation um, in terms of the, the curse, what, what taking what the Bible says for God uh, at, at face value, I think we interpret, we interpret certain things that we don't allow God's word to, to be sufficient in our explanation, in this explanation. For example, you know, that there would be death if Adam and Eve disobeyed. You know, it wasn't about the fruit. It was about their obedience. And, and I think we always, we as humanity always try to put another explanation into what God is making very clear. Um, and, and I saw that. I saw that as we, as we talked about it extensively. Um, you used your example of what happened with that, um, that brother in Christ who, who literally, you know, he took what he thought was his, but it wasn't his, you know, and you explained how your human side wanted to do everything that you felt was, was, you know, due to you, what was justice to you, but how God continued to speak to you and say, wait a second, you're a sinner. He is no better than what he is no better, or you are no better than what, than what that, that, that gentleman did to you. And really being able to, to, to go through the motions of, of the feelings that you were dealing with, but how, how God was saying to you that, you know, stand still and know that I am God and I'm working this out, but there's a lesson to be, to be uh, learned. And I think that that really, that really hit me because I, you know, I, as a human, sometimes I feel like, well, that person's, you know, he's spurned me. He's, he's done something to me. Um, but, but you're being able to share what happened to you. And I didn't hear all of it because I came in late because I teach a class on Sabbath. But, but what I heard was, you know, I am no, I, I am no better. My sin is no better than anyone else, you know, and, you know, thinking, well, they did this to me, to me now, but my sin, I did like, you know, 25 years ago that there's no there's no timing there you know what I mean where the lesson has to be the lesson has to be has to be mentioned and I thank you I thank you for being so detailed in everything that you give us I thank you for that so I don't have any question but but um I thank you for the explanation that you give us and just teaching me that you know wherever you find what you see here you have to go back to the first five books and that's something I've only been on for a couple of couple of days but i'm very appreciative of that anyone else praise the lord sister michelle <laughs> the lord really blessed you uh anyone else anyone else has any comments or about what we discussed or any questions or observations elder good morning Good morning. I wasn't there on Sabbath, but when I saw the six hour marathon, I said, my goodness, I can't look at that <laughs> this morning. But I have a question, though, and it goes back to what we were dealing with before Sabbath. And we were talking about the three ribs in the bear's mouth. And I know we spoke about the ribs and I understand where that came from. But I want to know why in the bear's mouth, because we have four animals, but it was found in the mouth of the bear. And I was wondering why it was in the mouth of the bear. Okay. Now, now do we understand um, the concept and the role of the woman let's 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 go back here We're, we start off with something let's let's turn over here to uh revelation 21 let's go and this will pick up what we we're talking about with the three ribs and the mouth of the bear okay let's read something here in revelation revelation 21 what was oh Let's start with verse one. Okay. 
And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John. Okay, now I want us to do two no more things. Sea. Okay, I want us to, and I, and I, John, saw what? And I, son, saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Okay. Continue. Yes. Uh -huh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay. And now, now, let me ask you a question here. Do you know that this verse here is connected with, it says, and I, John, saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a what? A bride. A bride. Now, when you think about <clears throat> a bride in Bible prophecy or in the Bible, what were we supposed to think about when it came to a bride? The church. The church. Now, Notice, go over here uh, to Great Controversy chapter, I think it's, is that chapter 24? Go to chapter 24 a minute. Go to chapter 24. What page is that, Sister Dawn, when it talks about uh, in, in 18, um, in the summer and autumn of 1844? 425. 425. I want you to go over here and look at something here because you, you've got to remember that God is unfolding things too. And he wants us to have a, a complete understanding of what he's trying to do. Now, notice what it says over here in 425. Okay. Now, you just said, um, and this is dealing with the 425. 425. 426, power, power 2. Okay, I want you to read something over here. Now, even though you said the church, he wants us to think along these lines that you see over here on page 426 in the book, Great Controversy. And hey. this, is dealing, this is still dealing with the three ribs in the mouth of the bear, okay? Now, let's go okay. over here to 426. It says, two. in the summer and autumn of 18... What? 44. Go ahead. The proclamation, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, was given. The two classes represented by the wise and foolish virgins were then developed. One okay, class. Now, now, notice here in the summer and autumn of 1844, the proclamation was given, Behold, the bride cometh, here comes the bride. No, 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 the bridegroom. Okay, now notice he is trying to so reprogram or re-educate our mind that we dwell upon the bridegroom or the what? Yeah, that is the bridegroom that we are supposed to pay our attention to. But but really, our focus is on the what? The counterfeit, the bride. Right. The bride. On oh, the bride. And this is a strange concept because in every wedding ceremony we go to, the focus and attention is always on the what? The counterfeit, the bride. The bride, the, the bride. bride. The bride. But that's the counterfeit because the bridegroom is who we're supposed to be paying attention to. But we don't do that, okay? But we look at the bride, yes. If we're looking at the bride, and this was something I had to really wrestle with because I don't care how you think about it. The mind is always drawn back to the bride and you just, you just pass on by the bridegroom. The bridegroom is really insignificant. It's the bride. It's the bride. Everything is the bride. You, the whole focus and attention is always on the what? Elder, you know, as you're saying, the spirit told me, because it's that superficial. We're looking at the bride to see how pretty she looks, to see how the dress fits her, how the dress is pretty. 
we look at the bride because it's just superficial. We're looking on the outside. But see, remember now, that's what got Lucifer in the trouble in heaven. He began to look at his beauty, remember? Yes. And there is a beauty that the bride has, but we don't understand that the beauty that the bride has came from who? Oh my God. From, wait a minute, from who? The bride. Oh. The bridegroom. Because, see, the bridegroom is none other than the creator. Christ created the bride, okay? Yes. But we are so wrapped up in the creation and we're not wrapped up in the creator who created the what? The bride. The bride. Evidently, so let's go back over here to keep reading what it says here. Great controversy or revelation? Great controversy. Okay. I want us to understand, because when I was reading this, it's a he, he says, behold, the bridegroom coming. It doesn't say, behold, the bride cometh. Okay, go ahead. The two classes represented by the wise and foolish virgins were then developed. One class who looked with joy to the Lord's appearing and who had been diligently preparing to meet him. Another class that influenced by fear and acting from impulse had been satisfied with a theory of the truth but were destitute of the grace of God. In the parable, when the bridegroom came, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. The coming of the and, bridegroom. And notice now when the, when the who comes? When the bridegroom came. Now the bridegroom comes to a certain group of people. Yes. Now notice then they that were ready went in with the who? With the bridegroom. With the bridegroom to the wedding. Now notice the group of people that go into the wedding, they are wrapped up or they are involved with the bride or the bridegroom? The bridegroom. Okay, now, keep reading. The coming of the bridegroom here brought to view takes place before the marriage. The marriage represents the reception by Christ of his kingdom. The holy city, the new Jerusalem, which is the capital and representative of the kingdom is called the bride, the last okay, so, wife. So according to this here, it says in 1844, the bridegroom, Christ, went in to receive what from the Father? The kingdom. Which kingdom is this? New, New Jerusalem. I said, what kingdom oh, is this? There's the kingdom of glory. Okay. Sorry. The kingdom... So Christ went in in 1844. I didn't even, like I told you before, I didn't even know anything about. He went in to receive a what? A kingdom. Now, because he goes in to receive a kingdom, another thing has to happen. Then the investigation has to start to see who is worthy to be with him where? In that kingdom. In that kingdom. I didn't, I didn't know the sequences. I just knew all we talk about investigative judgment, investigative judgment. And you know, it's like it's just hanging out there. I said, but wait a minute. So in 1844, he went in before the ancient of days of the father to receive a what? A kingdom. And since he has a kingdom, we went in to receive this. 
Now he's not investigating the kingdom, okay? The subjects for that who, kingdom. Actually, who qualifies to be what? Subjects. Subjects. For the kingdom. Yes. And, and see, in my mind, it did something with my mind because, you know, at Seven Day Adventist, we always talk investigative judgment, investigative judgment, investigative judgment. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. But I had no correct understanding of the reason for the investigative what? Judgment. And then when I realized, I said, wait a minute. So this thing about the kingdom of glory actually started in what year? 1844. I, I just thought that the you know kingdom of glory, I know it's not going to be established until he comes back. But I had no idea that the preliminaries are the, you know, he's already working on that now. You know, because to me, you know, I got time, you know. <laughs> But, he, but then I said, wait, wait a minute. So he's already, this whole thing is already in the process of going on. And that's why he's investigating. He's investigating to see who is going to be ordained or qualified to be a subject of his kingdom. Okay. So he's going through the whole human family starting all the way back in the beginning he's going to investigate whether or not it, cain is going to make it or abel is going to make it or seth this is what he's doing so i had this you know like the investigative judgment starts with the dead and then it comes to living you know it's just like okay but i didn't know that he's investigating them to see whether or not when they were living they qualified for him to move them from one kingdom into the what sister Trey? into the kingdom the kingdom of, of grace and from the kingdom of grace into the kingdom of glory yes and i had no idea see and, I, and then i began to see i said wait a minute so this bible is a very systematic, orderly, sensible book. <laughs> the man who wrote it is very orderly and sensible. <laughs> but see, I had it all scattered. You know, I knew about the investigative judgment, started with the living and death, but I didn't know that it had anything to do with what you're reading here. He went in to receive a kingdom in 1844. So a process started. And I said, I didn't know that this started. Did you know that this was connected with 1844, sister? Well, give God the praise, Elder. That's why God sent you. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. So therefore, I'm sitting here reading this stuff and I'm saying, oh, I said, we're in trouble. Because all I knew, I actually thought that in some kind of way, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was the what? The kingdom. The, the kingdom, the, the everything. The yeah. Seventh-day Adventist Church was everything. Yes. So, But notice, that's because, what did you say? The bride is the what? Is the church. Is the church. So all of our focus and our attention was always on the church, the church, the church, the church, the church, the church, the church. And it... It, and remember, the church has its place, but the place in my mind that the church has, I didn't know anything about when I went out there to witness to people. I was basically witnessing, and as I go back and search my motives and concepts, I was looking for an opportunity to get the people to come into the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of glory, or the church. Which one, sister? The church. That's the concept we have is to bring them into the church because we thought the church was the perfect place. After you get there, we don't have anywhere else to go. 
you've arrived. Yes. So therefore, when I ran into this about the bridegroom, he says, Elijah, notice the focus and attention was supposed to be on the what? On the bridegroom. The bridegroom. Not the bride. And I didn't really want to deal with that because it, it had always puzzled me. Why was it that when Jesus was on this earth, he never literally got what, Sister Gray? He never literally got married, remember? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know where you were going with that question. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. never really got married. He never really got a human wife or anything. And, you know, it's like an anomaly. We don't like to really look at it. Well, he's not weird or, you know, anything like that. So why didn't, why was it that he gave Adam and Eve marriage and he himself did not follow the concepts or the principles that, because remember the Bible says that the elder must be a husband of what? One what, wife. One wife, yeah. Why, why didn't he fulfill these things over here? Why did he do this like this? Okay. He set up a bride. And, he set up a bride long time. He had yeah. a bride. He already had a bride. So I wanted. So, so I wanted to understand these things because, see, and normally we stay away from that area because, to our understanding, marriage and a bride and all these things are really usually always revolving around sexual intercourse. That's the whole purpose, you know. Hey. If it wasn't that I needed to have sexual intercourse and I had all these desires, well, I wouldn't really get married, you know. Very true. So, so, and you, and because it's him, you want to stay away from that because you don't even want to think. No, he couldn't have had any concepts or ideas about sexuality, you know, because we have really, we really think like the Catholics think, you know, that sexuality is evil, so you got to put it away, okay. And so you never even investigated, okay? Now, keep reading what you're reading in Great Controversy. So in 1844, he went in to receive a kingdom. And the capital of his kingdom is the New Jerusalem. And that city is called the what? New Jerusalem, the kingdom of, sorry, the kingdom of glory. Right, but it's called the bride. The bride, yes. So therefore, here we're introduced to the concept of the bride in Revelation. So this bride over here has, is what he was thinking about. So it wasn't that he didn't take a physical bride he wasn't concerned about a physical bride when he was on earth, but the whole object lesson of the bride and the marriage and the wedding and everything had to do with something besides just going out there, getting myself a woman and producing children. And, and it was like, wait a minute. So we have really no right conception of this whole thing about the bride and the bridegroom and marriage. And I didn't really want to believe that. What do you mean? I don't understand this thing, huh? Because if I didn't, if I'm in my mind, I'm thinking here, here comes the bride, here comes the bride. And the Bible is saying, here comes the bridegroom then where did I get this concept from that here comes the bride and the bride should be the what focus of what? Attention. And you as a female, you automatically believe that you should be the focus of what? Attention. Of course. And when you are not the focus of attention, when my husband don't love me the way I'm supposed to be loved, 
you get irritated. But then you run into the same issue over here that wait a minute, is the bridegroom you're supposed to be focusing on your husband or is your bridegroom supposed to be someone what? Someone else. And you got to understand that most women, you in your mindset, your focus of attention is how can I please my what? Husband. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that concept. But God says, you, I created you to please him in the way I direct you, not in the way he, what? He. So it, it began to, my, my, my thinking began to, to do this because the first institution that God gave the man and the woman was what? Marriage. Marriage. If we got a misconception about marriage, then we will have a misconception about what? About God and the kingdom and everything else, the bride, everything we're going to have mixed up. And this is what has happened. Yes! To us. That's because we, we I... see we have never looked at marriage from the spiritual aspect of it. You only look at it from the physical aspect, but God had a bigger intention for us when he That's said two I... shall become of one flesh as one flesh. That's that what... unity is what he was looking for that looked like the Godhead. Yes. Now that opened doors and then when I began to go down there and, and just like as I'm talking to you, do you know when I bring up this and I'm sharing my thoughts. I said, wait a minute, I've never considered this. And I'm looked at like, oh, you're some off in left field, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I said, well, wait a minute. I never even considered what was God's purpose in giving the marriage institution? Did it all encompass with just me and the woman? Or was he using that as an object lesson that he allowed me to put, be a part, a party to. And I never did that. Now in Catholicism, the Catholics, they completely threw it away, period. Because they, whoa, you know, because, you know, the priests and the nuns, they don't get what? All right. So in Catholicism, marriage just is thrown out of the door. It's, and he says, Elijah, so you have to go back and ask me or allow me to walk you through and unfold to you, like you said, my perspective of how I wanted you to look at what? Marriage. Because... Now keep on reading. So now we see in great controversy that the new Jerusalem is the bride. And in chapter 21, we say that the bride is saying what? Notice what the bride says over here in Revelation 21 verses. What? Verse 2. 2 and 3. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Now, who is, who is this great voice out of heaven? God the Father himself. Oh, God the Father himself. Now, notice it says with the ten virgins, it says that, well, go, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and read Great Controversy, okay? Okay. Said the angel to John, come hither, I will show thee the bride the lamb's wife. 
Because now notice now notice how the spirit of prophecy works. The spirit of prophecy is we have Revelation 21. And who knew that we had a misconception about this whole thing? The devil. No, no, no. Uh, who, is, who is this great voice? Oh, God. God himself. Yeah, knew. But, the knew, but I think he knew that we would have had a misconception about many things because the arch enemy has come to overthrow, undermine everything that he has set up. So everything you see happening in the Bible, you can look at the enemy and see how he's going to counteract that. Thank you. So since, so since the father knew that Satan had deceived us, even when it comes to marriage and the bride and the bridegroom, and, and, and it's big time, because in our church, if you go in there and change the scenario around, and put the bride at waiting at the altar, and we started singing, here comes the bridegroom, here comes. They look at you like you, what? Crazy. <laughs> they look, and you would be considered, wait a minute, what's wrong? This, no, no, no. Now, so therefore, he gave us the spirit of prophecy right here on page 426, 427, a great controversy. Now, note it. You have two groups of people who are going to read this. You have the wise virgins and the what? The foolish. The foolish virgins, okay. Keep reading. He carried me away in the spirit, says the prophet. Now, where do you see? Now, where do you see he carried me away? Remember Revelation. Revelation, what? Um, carried me away in the spirit. Trying to remember seventeen. Ah, oh, Revelation seventeen three. You remember he says, and he carried me away in the spirit. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank you, Sister Loan, in the wilderness. Yes. Okay. Okay, now let's go back here to Great Controversy, okay? And he carried me away. And he carried me away in the spirit, says the in the spirit, says the prophet, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Wait a minute. Revelation 21, uh, 9 and 10. When does this event happen. This is this, this is at the coming of Jesus when is when the new Jerusalem begins to descend. That's in where in chapter what? 21. Of the great, no, oh, in, oh. in chapter 42, after the what? After the seven last plagues. No, ma'am. After the, <laughs> the thousand, after the thousand, what? Seven years. Oh, after, after the thousand years. years. After yes. the thousand well, years. Yes, resurrection. Well, yeah, well, yes. I, I, <laughs> that is what I meant. That is what I meant. After, after the, the, whole, uh, the drama so, have played out here on earth. So remember when he comes back the second time, he doesn't bring the new Jerusalem. The, new, the father doesn't send the new Jerusalem here at the second. We have to go to the what? The new Jerusalem, and then it will come down. Notice we don't get to the new earth unless we're willing to go to where? To heaven. No, to the new Jerusalem in heaven. Yeah, well, well, okay. Right. So if you notice this whole thing, he's saying, so, and to correctly understand why the new Jew, why does God the Father send the new Jerusalem down from heaven down to this earth, Sister Greg? And this is dealing with the three ribs in the mouth of the bear. Okay. Okay. Why does he send? 
what you're reading here in great controversy. And I saw the new Jerusalem come down from then read what it says. Um, I'm going to go back up. He carried me away in the spirit, says the, pro says the prophet, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Wait a minute. So who makes the decision to send the new Jerusalem down here? God. God the who? The Father. All right. So God the Father makes a decision to send <clears throat> the new Jerusalem from a location where it is now. See, it's, it's, it's at a place. <clears throat> and where is the where is the new Jerusalem located now? In heaven. See, I always thought that the new Jerusalem was what? Heaven. But now what happened? I was reading. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the new Jerusalem is going to come down from God, the Father, out of a place called what? Heaven. It doesn't mean that because the new Jerusalem comes down here, heaven still what? Exists. It means, yes. It was always there. So heaven was always there. So therefore, I, I said, wait a minute. I thought the new Jerusalem was heaven and heaven was the new Jerusalem. He says, no, 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 Elijah. Just like I planted a garden eastward in a place called Eden. So Eden is a place and the garden is a what? A place. It was placed in Eden. Right. The garden so the, was placed in Eden. Yeah. So the New Jerusalem is located in a place called heaven. Okay. Okay. I never took time to, you know, because you just zip, zip through and you never take time to really, you know, walk, you know, patiently with God through these things. Keep on reading. Clearly then, the bride represents the holy city and the virgins that go out to meet the bridegroom are a symbol of the church. Okay, so it therefore, if I see here in the spirit of prophecy that the bride represents the what? The church. Now, notice what no, you sorry, just said. Just the bridegroom. Notice, notice what it says. Clearly, then, the bride, bride represents the holy city. And oh. the virgins that go out to meet the bridegroom are a symbol of the church. Okay, so God's plan with giving us the institution of marriage was always to bring us to the realization that the bride and all this thing about this was to point our minds towards what? what you no, 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 to what? Oh, the holy city. Thank you. So therefore, I said, wait a minute. So this whole thing about this, all the way back in the first five books about marriage, had to do with you teaching me lessons about the holy city, New Jerusalem. So it wasn't really about sexual intercourse. And he says, Elijah, look at your look at your thinking. We had glimpses of it, you know, Elder. We had glimpses of that, but we never dug into the concept. So no. we knew it represented God in some way, the relationship between the Godhead in some way. But we never took the time to look at it in a deep sense. Yes. So, so go ahead. So we know, and what I'm looking at here too, is that she said, clearly then the bride represents the holy city and the virgins that go out to meet the bridegroom are a symbol of the church. That means that the church contains wise virgins 
and it contains foolish virgins. True. But notice now, when you, when you do this now, we have to abandon the concept of the church being the what? The bride. The, um, the bride. The bride. Mm -hmm. Now, God. The bride just, is not the church. The, 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 um, the bride well, the is the holy city. That is True. what it is. Well, see, we're in the same thing that God wants to use the church as an object lesson. But you remember how when John stood up and says, behold, the what? The bride lamb. cometh. No, behold, the lamb of what? Oh, sorry. The lamb of God. Do you know that the majority of the people that heard him, they were actually looking for a what? A lamb. Now, even though he used the lamb, the created entity, to teach an object, to teach a lesson, the people actually began Begin to believe that the creative entity was the lamb that he was talking about. So they and didn't. They, they, they did not make the relation between the correlation between the lamb that they themselves, because they were the ones that were responsible for the outer court. So they knew all about the sacrificing of the lamb. So they did not put the two together and realize that the lamb represented this human entity that was now coming on the scene. They did mm. not see that. They didn't. And guess what? Sure. He uses the physical church on earth as an object lesson pertaining to the bride. But like the Jews, they didn't go beyond the literal animal. We refuse to go beyond the literal church. When did the church, when was the church brought into existence, Sister Gray? Um, we have the apostolic church as the protestants. We have Notice when, when notice when you go back to Genesis two. Go to Genesis two. Genesis two verses. <clears throat> okay, Genesis two verses eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a oh, help okay. me for him. Why did he say it is not good for the man to be alone? Because it was only half, half a person Sister, at that time. Wait a minute. Sister Michelle, could you help our Sister Gray? Why is it that God says it's not good? for the man to be alone. Now, remember, we can look at it from how human perspective, or why is God saying these things? And what is he trying to teach us about the Godhead? There's, um, there needs to be unity in, in the Godhead. Now, in the Godhead, is the Father alone? No. Is the Son alone? No. Is the Holy Spirit alone? No. So, was that the alone or the revealing that he wanted us to understand that, wait a minute, the Father just doesn't sit there. And he's all by himself and he's into himself and he thinks about nobody but himself. 
or does the Godhead consist of three beings that are one? Which one? The Godhead consists of three beings that are one. And so when I was reading this, and that is not good for man to be alone. Oh, well, he knew that I would be what, Sister Michelle? Alone. I, a lonely, you know, yeah. by myself. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, you hear all this and, and God. And in fact, we the concept was, and God stepped out in space and he says, he created man because he didn't want to be what alone, okay? And all these things sound so nice and, you know, sympathetic and, you know, gushy. Oh, he wanted. But wait a minute. So this alone here has nothing to do with the physical, you know, I need somebody to, sure, these things are vital in our existence that we need someone to touch and feel. But God says, wait, 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 wait a minute, don't stop at that, what? At that level. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm trying to reveal to you something about the Godhead, okay? Because, see, remember, the great controversy in heaven was started over Lucifer giving misinformation or disinformation or lies or whatever about the Godhead. Is this not true? Yes. All right. Now. Keep reading Genesis. So then you have to make that decision whether or not he's saying alone, it has something to do with me being in proximity to you or you being in proximity to me or physically touching and all these things dealing with our senses. Or is he inviting us to consider the attributes and qualities of the Godhead, okay? So you said because I will. Oh, sorry, sorry, I thought you. Good, go ahead, go ahead. And I will make <clears throat> him <clears throat> and help me for me. And out okay. of the. Wait a minute. Now I will make him a what? A help me for him. What has this got to do with the what? The, the alone. The alone. And what has a help me got to do with the Godhead? Normally, we don't think about this. No, this is, wow, finally God is making the man a woman so that he can have a what? A wife. A wife. Well, it says a help meet, okay? So what is this whole thing about a help meet concept supposed to take my mind to? It's someone equal. Oh, someone equal to him. Now in the Godhead, who is this supposed to bring forth? That the father has a what? Someone equal to him. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And it's not because a father has sexual relationship with someone who's what? Equal to him. <laughs> Think about it. The man's the man's mind is really if he if you really think about it, and it's such a disservice and a discredit mm. to what God intended for to be. The man is out looking for someone he can have sexual relationship with. And the woman is taught, well, I got to go find me a man that he can have sexual relationship with. What? 
with me. And neither one of them are thinking about anything pertaining to the what? To the Godhead. I wasn't thinking about the Godhead. Were you thinking about the Godhead, Sister Michelle? No, no. Mind blown. What? Wow. Thing from my what? Hmm. Furthest thing from my mind. And, and it's the beauty of it is that God knew we had this misunderstanding, and He still worked with us. And then in the relationship, it gets to the point where, well, okay, yeah, I, I enjoyed the sexual thing, but it gets to be, wait a minute, is this all there is about marriage? And you know it's not all that it was, but then you begin to, well, uh, maybe it's taking trips, maybe it's celebrating anniversaries, okay? And you, and we include rituals and we never give him an opportunity to say, let me unfold to your mind the purpose of what? Marriage. Go ahead, my sister. So, so keep reading Genesis, the second chapter. So the help meet, even that, our mind goes to psh- to the physical and to the creature. Mine never goes to the Godhead. Maybe, maybe if we had seen this or somebody explained this to us in counseling, then a lot of marriages wouldn't go where it's going today. If these well, things are explained, but these things are never explained in counseling. We never see these things. And remember, you read about it on page 426, that the group consists of how many, how many groups of people? Two groups Two of group, people, right? yes, the wise and the foolish. Now remember, what was the difference between the wise and the foolish? They had one had oil and one was lacking. Now, the oil is a symbol of who? The Holy Spirit. So, the only reason why you and I are even investigating this is because what you read in uh, Revelation 21, it says, and I heard a what? Oh, from where? From heaven. So that person that you're going to, is that person, the minister, whoever, is they in heaven? What is they? There's the spirit, spirit speaking. The spirit is who have us investigating. All that we're asking today, all that we're learning today is the spirit because the spirit wants us to know. So, and that's because he said something else. How many of the virgins went to sleep? Ten. So, was the... So if all 10 of the virgins are asleep, then was virgin number six supposed to go to virgin number one or was virgin number eight supposed to go to virgin number seven? Well, should have been speaking to the Holy Spirit. Oh, because the only reason why you and I are investigating this now is because There was a voice from heaven that is doing what with us? Waking 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 us us what? It ain't got nothing to do with Brother Elijah. Brother Elijah is just another virgin that is 
He's waking up. He's waking up too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and he's waking you up because you're having thoughts in your mind. Wait, wait a minute. How come I didn't? It's like when you wake up in the morning. Okay, where am I? You know how you wake up and you know you're in the car. Oh, and you're traveling on the road in the car. And before you went to sleep, you were at one location. And when you wake up, you're in a totally different one. Please. Just as you woke up, uh, you waking up a little before us. So you helping to wake us up now. <laughs> <laughs> you got up at three. We're now getting up at three today. <laughs> and I'm saying, and I'm looking around, wait a minute. Those familiar landmarks that I thought he says, oh, I want to help you to understand, Elijah. So therefore, I never thought about help meet had anything to do with who? The Godhead. The Godhead. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with the Godhead. Keep reading. And out of the ground... The Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever okay, now, Adam called. This, now notice what he does here with Adam. Is this before Adam sinned or after Adam sins? That's before. Now notice, God does not go to Adam and say, well, Adam. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you about a woman. He doesn't do that. Notice what he's doing here. What does he do? He's doing something with uh, that which he's taking out of the ground. Out of the ground, he creates what? Man. Excuse me. Animals, living creatures. What? living creatures he creates the animals right I thought that was by the wood now, so, out of the, so out of the ground he brings forth the animals okay 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 now notice then after he, he creates the animal he does what with him, with the animals He gave Adam to name them. He lets Adam name them. Now, according to the Bible, when you see the word name, what does that supposed to bring to your mind? Remember over in the book of Revelation, he says we will have a new what? Name. Oh, so if I, if I misunderstand name over here, I'm going to misunderstand name over where? Over in the end. So name over in the book of Genesis has to do with him calling the creature a L-I-O-N or him looking at the character or the attributes of that animal. Okay, see where you're going now. Okay, huh? so we, yeah, because a name is very in 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 biblical times, a name was very important. As you as you now saying, a name. Uh, when a parent gave a child a name, the parent looked at the child and named the child based on the child's character, and they could have <sighs> seen that from before. But we didn't do that. I didn't know that I was supposed to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit and giving the child a name. I named him after, okay, I like this movie star, this actor, or my friend, or this place. I didn't know that. And I always wondered, so you mean Adam called the lion a lion? <laughs> <You know? laughs> but the word 
name here has to do something with Adam studying or investigating the character of this what? Animal. This animal. And, uh, I'm thinking of a new or something else now as you're talking about that because we know now that when Adam gave the lion its name, it's not the lion that we know now. Of course not. So would the lion then get a new name or it would be the, it will just remain the lion, but it will pick up or it will be converted into its original character. Okay, now notice, to help you understand this one, go over there to Revelation 5. I think it's 5 verses, Revelation 5, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Go ahead. Revelation 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look therein. Keep going. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein, thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Okay, now and, note, Christ is called the lion of the what? Tribe of Judah. Now that's, that's dealing with what you were talking about. Now, Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Is this talking about the lion as it existed before Adam's sin or the lion as it exists after Adam's sins. Which one? This is before. Oh, I never thought about it. He says, but Elijah, if you were to go into the garden before Adam's sin, there was a what? A lion. So did Christ take on the attribute? Because remember the Bible says, and, and the, Satan is as a roaring what? Lion. Oh, so Satan displays the characteristics of the lion after what? After sin. Christ displays the characteristics of the lion. Be what? Before, before sin. Before sin. Okay. I said, wait a minute. He says, Elijah, I want you you to let me guide your mind, okay? Because <laughs> I, I said, well, wait a minute. So, so Christ, because all the lion I know about is the lion after what? After sin, that's all we know. He says, but there was a lion that existed before sin. And in him, you see the characteristics, attributes, and qualities of the lion one. Before sin. But I want him to have the characteristics and the qualities of the lion. What? After sin. I'm going to beat up people. Yes! <laughs> <sighs> and it's like, and as you're sitting back, you says, how could I just missed all of this? Now, now we go back and we understand why he comes and says he brought the animals to see what he would what? Name them. So name has to do with what you see. And, and, and he's promised you. Sister Peggy, what has he promised you?
He's promised to give you a new what? A new name. Oh, so is he talking about a new name? He's going to change your name from Peggy to Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Would you want her to have your name? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like my name, but <laughs> I, oh, so I you my name. She has her name. Yes. Let's see. Remember when we understand how name was supposed to be understood by us, that it has to do with character. <clears throat> do you think Peggy would make it into the new New Jerusalem with your character, Michelle? No. Thank you. And none of you would make it into the New Jerusalem with my character, okay? Because I look at it sometimes and I'm, I know I'm disgusted. What? <laughs> I'm disgusted with myself. <laughs> you don't want to give anybody that name now no. at all. Is that right? Carlene, is that not true? Do you want anyone to have your name, Carlene? I don't know. <laughs> Lots of people have my name. <laughs> oh, and when you look at that, look at them, would you want to have that name? Or would you like to have him write a new name in your forehead? I think I would prefer the new name. Thank you. And that's what, and see, see, once we understand how he's using the word name over here in Genesis, then we understand. And he says, I will give you a new what? Name. A new character. A new character. And this is the character that was wrought out by Christ. Christ says, let me create in you a new what? Character. Go ahead. So we're, talking, we're still talking about the three ribs, okay? Keep on going. So he brings the animal to Adam to see, and Adam is studying their character. You see, in order to... In order for uh, the scientists to create an airplane, where did they get the idea from creating an airplane from? A bird. Studying the what of the bird? The, the, the characteristics. Yes, of the bird. Mm -hmm. not, not, not just looking the at wings, the wings. Yeah, the wings, the aerodynamics, how they lift <sighs> up, how they go down. Yes, characteristics yes. of the bird. Yes. How are they able to do this? How are they able to move their feathers? And how does, you know, all of this work? Yes. How some flap, how some saw through the wind. Yes. Of all of that. All of these characteristics, okay? Keep on reading Genesis 20, Genesis 2. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was none found to help and help me for him. Okay. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. So, so, so Adam was investigating the animal kingdom. He realized that out of all of these creatures he saw, that there was no one that reflected what? His character. Character like Thank his you. own. The characteristics are the attributes. Okay, now, you okay? Okay, go ahead. Yes, now. I need to jot down something here. And the Lord of God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he now, walk. why is he doing this now? Remember, we're talking He's about moving the Adam, moving Adam out of the way. 
Okay. But before he can move Adam out of the way, Adam had to come to a realization about something else. What did, what did Adam have to do? He had to realize his position, his condition where he was, and I suppose what was missing from around oh. him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Notice, according to the scriptures, when Isaac was to have a wife, who did Isaac go to? His father. Notice when Jacob needed a wife, who did he go to? Dad. He went to who? His dad, his father. His father. Now notice when Isaac went to Abraham, his father, for a wife, what did Isaac's fathers do that was different from what Isaac mistakenly did with Jacob? What did, what was the two different things? Um, he sent one sent a servant, one sent a servant to look for it. Um, trying to remember. You are the two. One you sent are, a servant. And 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 the servant That's Jacob. Jacob sent a servant to look for a wife. Well, oh, no. Who um Abraham. Makes him, Abraham sent a servant to look for a wife for Isaac. Mm -hmm. And the mistake that Isaac made later on is he sent who to look for a wife for himself. Huh? Now, who does the servant present in the illustration with Abraham and Isaac? Who does Elias represent? Of the father. No, he's the representative of the father, but who was supposed to choose Isaac's wife? The father himself. The father sent Eleazar, the servant. Do you know that in the Greek word, the word uh, doulos means servant of? So, so it was the Holy Spirit that was supposed to guide us in the selection of our helpmeet. Carlene. Carlene. I'm here. Who guided you in the selection of your help meet? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I probably did that on my own. <laughs> oh, so which one category would you be in? The category of Isaac and Abraham or the category of Jacob and Isaac? Which one? Um, I'm probably Jacob and Isaac, maybe. And when you, and guess what? I never knew that I was supposed to let who? Ah, uh, yes, God. Yeah. You know, we we pray a little prayer. You know, what's that song that Diama? I pray a little prayer for you. You know, but we, you know, we say a prayer, but hey, uh, but you know, God, I'm just praying to you, but I'm I gotta do this thing on my own. I gotta find me a what? We just have to go to put a rubber stamp on it. Oh yes. And that's the same thing we do. We come back to our prayer. Okay, I found this man and I want you to uh Pay for the wedding, and it's like, uh, oh, 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 uh, uh, okay. <laughs> we 
and, and if you really look at it, and then later on, we wonder why we have what? Problem. Yeah. And, and, and you know what we said? Well, see, I, I had a wedding, I had a white dress, I had a honeymoon, I had rice, I had all these things. And why am I having what? Problem. And God is I, saying. I did everything right. Oh, did you say what? I did everything right. So I why did. am I having problems now? Why am I having problems now? You say get married, I got married. And now I'm having problems. Why? I did the right thing. Thank you. <coughs> so basically notice, <clears throat> why did he put him to sleep, Carlene? Because he has not, he had nothing to do with it, you know. I guess he has nothing to do with it. But notice, <clears throat> Adam is studying out the characteristics and attributes, and he's learning certain lessons from what God is trying to teach him as he's studying out these animals, you know, he sees them in pairs and so forth like that. So at this junction, since he sees that there's a male animal and a what? Female. He sees that, that there's a male uh, deer, male cat, female cat. Okay. He doesn't see two males, you know, so homosexuality is not what he, what? He doesn't he create, see. He didn't create that. No. So at this junction, who is working with his mind? Sister Brenda, who's working with Adam's mind? The father. So Adam comes to the realization that who has something in store for him? The father. True. And he has to accept <clears throat> what the father has in store for him by faith or by Sight, which one? My faith. Isaac had to accept what was in store for him by faith or by sight. By faith, he wasn't seeing that the negotiation was going on behind his back, so he didn't know. Oh. So he had to believe Jake? that he was going to get a good wife from his father by faith. But Jacob made his decision by faith or by sight? By sight. He saw Rebecca and fell in love with her. Rachel. He saw sorry, Rachel. Re Rachel. Sorry, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Re Rebecca was I, I exact. Um, Rebecca was Jacob's mother, okay? Yeah. So these have two illustrations of two principles by faith and by sight okay so according to the bible it says that the just should live by faith and without faith it is impossible to do what he's good so carlene since you know that you basically made your decision about marriage based upon faith or by sight and you were, you know, kind enough to admit it. What are you to expect in your marriage? Yes, um, rocky roads. But and the rocky roads are designed to discourage you 
are designed to teach you a lesson. A lesson. Yeah. Oh. And the lesson is, if I had to do it all over again, I would go by what? God's way, I guess. Yes. So, so therefore, Adam had to do something because no, God puts him into a what kind of sleep? A deep sleep. Mm -hmm. A deep sleep. Question. Just a thing. Yes. Is the marriage institution entered into by faith or by sight? Today by sight, we see, we like, we go down that road and we are hoping that by sight, it will work out for us, but it should really be by faith. Thank you. So did Adam enter into the marriage relationship with the person that God created by faith? Or by sight. By faith, he was in a deep sleep. He didn't know what God was producing for him. But notice he had to do it just like Isaac. Isaac had to sit over here and wait by what? By faith. He didn't know what she looked like, what she smelled like, how tall, how short, whether her hair was whatever. He didn't know any of that. Okay. And he wasn't anxious, okay? Was Adam anxious? No, he was not. Because the Bible says, be anxious for what? For nothing. See, faith doesn't lead me to be what? Fearful. Or anxious, okay? Mm -hmm. So therefore... Adam had to enter into the marriage institution. Okay, because think about it. When have you ever felt a Sabbath, Sister Peggy? Sister Peggy. Sister Brenda, have you ever seen a Sabbath? Sister Carlene? Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Have you ever heard a Sabbath? No, I've not heard a Sabbath. Have you ever seen the Sabbath? No, I've seen have the Sabbath. You, have you ever felt a Sabbath? No. Have you Sorry. ever have you ever tasted a Sabbath? Never. Notice the only way you can enter into the Sabbath is by your senses or by faith. By faith. And normally we base our relationships with one another is usually what I can see about you, hear about you, feel about you, touch about you. But we have a hard time entering into a relationship with one another based upon what? 
faith. Faith. And this is where, because we never see, look at, we never see that way, Elder. We never see that way because we trust the senses, like the science today. We trust the senses. So we look at the situation, we sum it up, we talk about it. We feel actually, because we have that touch, that sensation, that emotion, and all of that. And we base all that we do upon that. And that has opened up a whole kind of worms in my head right now. Because I think the church puts us in a position that allows you not to make a real choice. Because if it is by faith, whoever the Lord presents to you is who he wants you to work with. So I am thinking all kinds of things, but that's for another discussion. And we wouldn't get on that discussion today because we wouldn't <laughs> finish this morning. Okay, see, we're talking about what we're reading over there in Revelation about the bride, the voice says, you know, is waking us up. And this, this bride that you see over here in Revelation has something to do with the rib that I see over here in what? In, in Genesis. In Genesis, okay. Yes, so I understand that part. I understand where the rib came from. I understand that. I know that the rib came from because the rib represents the woman and the woman represents the church. So and I, since, I see that. And so, so therefore, if I see that the woman, the rib, because notice over here, and God took a what? A rib. Why did he take the rib? Did he have to take a rib in order to bring the woman into existence? He didn't have anything when he created Adam. So he didn't have to have anything. Okay, so then you have to go to him and say, well, Lord, what were you trying to, what did you want me to understand about the rib? Because normally he created a rib and a woman and we just throw it away after that, okay? Yeah, yeah, we just passed the rib straight. It's until now when we went to Revelation and we saw the three ribs and now we can make the association. Now that asks a lot of other questions based on what we have just discovered because I'm sure there's much more to unearth there as well. So okay. this is what now, I'm trying to unearth here this morning. Okay, now if you notice, you see the bride and you saw that the bride represented the holy city, but you also saw somebody else represents the church. And the church represents the what? The, the virgins. The, the virgins. The virgins. Yes. Okay. Now represents notice, the church. Go to Revelation 14. 14, 1, 2, 3, 4. Read what it says there. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. What type of lamb? What type of lamb is this? A lamb. We just said what? a lamb. I looked and lo, no. a lamb. If you, if you were to describe this oh. lamb that you see here, you would have to find that lamb that it, you see here in the first five books. And where would you find that lamb? Uh, in the sanctuary. Where would you find it in the first five books, Sister Carleen? Um, in Genesis. Genesis what? In 20? Genesis. In Genesis three. No, Genesis 20. 22. 20. Oh no! But didn't we have a lamb? Didn't did God take? Oh, He just said to kill an animal and clothe. <laughs> this morning, my brain not working right. You know, no, I no, wake you're... up yet. Well, see, well, see, I'm not, looking at. I'm not trusting your brain. I'm trusting who? Who's brain? God's brain. No, my brain not functioning right this morning. Oh, well, well, it ain't been functioning. Wake up right. No, no, your brain ain't been functioning right for a good while, okay? <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> you, 
you know, sometimes. Well, it's a little worse today, Elder. <laughs> sister, I will go into a store and I will be walking around and I have to actually stop. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> You go to the store, Elder. I go to the fridge. I just turned from the store to go to the fridge. And when I get to the fridge, I said, What am I in here for? <laughs> and I said, This is unreal. <laughs> Why am I in the fridge? I don't have a clue. And I just turn around to go to the fridge. Don't remember. <laughs> so, 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 don't feel bad. Your brain has been functioning right for a long while. <laughs> and, and Sister Carleen, and Sister Carleen can tell you about it. <laughs> you know, so therefore, we were supposed to understand when we saw the lamb over here. It was associated with this lamb that we see in Genesis twenty-two thirteen, and, and in Genesis twenty-two thirteen, you remember Isaac asked the question, "Lord, he, Isaac said, here's the wood, here's the knife, but where is the what sacrifice?'" And then Abraham says, "God will provide Himself a what?" A lamb. And then he tells you what the lamb is down in verse thirteen. He says. And Abraham looked, and behold, there was what caught in the thicket? A ram. A ram. So over here, so this ram over here that I see in Genesis 22, 13, is the same lamb or ram that I see in Revelation 14, okay? All right? And see, we have to understand this lamb over here, that's the ram, in order to understand the other one, now go over there to uh, Genesis 15, I think it's 15, verse 8 and 9. Because see, the male lamb has to have and fulfill its duties before we come in with the female lamb, and we find the female lamb right here. Go, go to uh, Genesis uh, 15, uh, verse, I think it's verse six, seven, and eight. Um, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of, of earth of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, <clears throat> and a young pigeon. Now notice, notice after the heifer, the heifer is what, the female or the male? Female. The female. And what was the next one, the she-what? The she-goat. Now, whenever I notice, whenever I see, remember, at, you and I have been putting the same position and God has taken us back to the same school or the same classroom that he did with Adam. And we were supposed to study the animal and study the characteristics. Remember, he brought him to Adam. So he's doing this once with you and I. He's bringing me a male lamb. Oh, and I'm supposed to know that. Oh, when I see the male lamb, it has something to do with the redemption of who? The planet or me? The planet. Ah, uh -uh, the male. Oh, the male. Oh, humanity. The male lamb has to do with the redemption of who? Man. Man. And when I saw the female animal, it has something to do with the redemption of? The earth. The planet. So therefore, that's why I asked you in Levitica in, in Revelation 14, and you see a lamb on Mount Zion. Is this still dealing with the redemption of man or is this the redemption of the planet? Which one? Man. Thank you. 
So since it's dealing with the redemption of man, you and I, this animal has to be a what? A ram, okay? Okay? Do we understand how God wants us to understand these things, okay? Now notice, keep on reading. Now you're going to find something else over here in Revelation, the 14th chapter. Keep reading. Um, I was writing. Um, and he said unto him, take me a heifer. Oh, no, I read that already. And he no, took. Revelation, the 14th chapter. <clears throat> Oh, going back to 14, Revelation 14, sorry. I'm going back up on the top. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144 and 4,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Having and his I, father's what? Father's name written in their foreheads. And name means what? Character. Character, attributes, qualities, okay? Keep going. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and of the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn the song, that song, but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Mm -hmm. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow they the lamb. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Okay. Now, when I want to understand, you remember you just read about the holy city, New Jerusalem is the bride, and the church represents the what? The virgins. Then I want to know, okay, if I read this in the spirit of prophecy, it has something to do with what I'm reading where? right now, okay? Is yes. that not true? Yes. Now, but if I'm reading it in the spirit of prophecy and great controversy, then if I'm reading it in Revelation 14 about virgins, I must be able to find the foundational principle for virgins where? This was five books. Where do we find that? There's my concordance. Concordance, where are you? Those five books. Mm -hmm. Go to Leviticus, the 21st chapter. <clears throat> 21st chapter, you said, Elder? Leviticus, the 21st chapter. Yes, 21st chapter, right. Um, reading from one because I see three. Ed, reading from one. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but for his skin that is near unto him, that is for his mother and for his father and for his sons and for his daughter and for his brother, and for his sister, a virgin, that is nigh unto him, which had had no husband, for her may he be defiled. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God for the offerings of the Lord made by fire 
and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore. For now, who, offered... who, is, who is this talking about here? For thou what? Um, For thou shalt not take a what? A whore. All right. So when Jesus was walking on this earth, did he find any female that had not fallen into this category? Nope. Huh? We shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane neither. Or profane. Neither shall they take a woman for the from my husband. So he was looking for a pure person, somebody who have not gone away from. No, no, gone so when, into. When, gone when, into. Go ahead. He was looking for a woman that had not gone into what? Into sin. Because remember, should he have had a human earthly wife and she had gone into sin and he had not gone into sin, then he would be unequally what? Yoked. Did he, was he able to find any female on this earth who had not gone into sin? No. So how could he have taken himself oh, a human wife? But Elder, this is exactly why he wasn't married, because he had to find that perfect bride. And he's still looking for that perfect bride to this day. But remember, who was to find the perfect bride for him? The was father. He... Ah, the father. Mm -hmm. So he was trusting the father, and he refused to make the decision that Jacob did, okay? Jacob made the decision based upon his senses, but Christ knew that he could not make a decision based upon his what? His own senses. He had yes. to wait for his father, and he's still waiting on his father to give him the go-ahead. The father is still choosing the bride. That, oh, that choice hasn't been made as yet. Oh, but wait a minute. You just read it. In 1844, he went in before the father to receive his what? His bride. Yeah, and but how, how long is how long is 1840? How long is 1844 in the future, the present, or is it something that happened over 150 years ago? Oh, over 150 years ago. So he went in before the father to receive his bride in what year? 1844. Isn't that what you just read? Yeah, I did. But I am I am here, Elder, and I am now con more confused because he went in to take his bride. We know the church that, that, that came up in around that time. So we know where the bride is situated, but I don't know. I'm not seeing the bride as yet. I, I, well, I'm looking through my own eyes, oh, of course. Oh, so you're looking through your own, <laughs> own eyes. My own eyes. So are you looking, are you? At me. <laughs> at me, Elder. I'm but looking at he, me. But remember, was he looking through the eyes of faith or was he looking through the eyes of his senses? 
Oh, well, I think he was looking through the eyes of faith. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. So therefore, if you notice, and this is your homework, if you notice in the book of Leviticus, it gave the qualifications for a, the priest that was anointed. If he was going to be the priest that was anointed, then he had to what? Follow these and fulfill this. So he couldn't take a woman that was not what, 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 all these conditions right here, okay? It was sinful. There's no way. He couldn't take. Now, just because she was, and he knew that this was not talking about something physical, okay? Yeah. Because, see, we normally, when we talked about a virgin, we normally point back to the physical person called Mary, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. I'm not talking about whether or not the person has had physical relationships. You know, that's not, and that's where we make the mistake when it comes to marriage. We always base it upon physicality, okay? So basically, we see the virgins mm -hmm. here in Revelation 14, and it says, and they are virgins. And notice what it says, and the virgins have nothing to do with what? Revelation 14. For they are virgins. And notice it doesn't say in this chapter that the virgins have nothing to do with man or have nothing to do with women. And they are, um, these women. are they which were not defiled with women. Oh, so notice here, he doesn't even want our thoughts to run down the road of a male and female having sexual relationship because it doesn't say that these virgins were defiled with a man. It says, or was God talking about homosexuality here or lesbianism? No. Nope. So he's trying to say, look, your thinking is not on track. Because these virgins were not defiled with what? With women. Women. It didn't say that these virgins were not defiled with what? Men. And that's what had happened in, when he walked this earth. He ever oh you're a virgin because you have not had sex with a what man, but but he says wait a minute, I'm not talking about that because it's obvious he's not talking about it because these virgins are not defiled with men. If but is this referring to the church here, this women here? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Because remember, you asked the question about the three what. The three ribs, but I was more concentrated in the in the bear's mouth. I understand the ribs, but I didn't understand why it was in the mouth of the bear. That is my that was my question. Okay. Well, see, remember now, you know that the rib has something to do with the woman, and the woman has something to do with the church, correct? Yeah, yes, correct. Now, according to uh according to the Bible, God has brought his organized church into existence how many times three times of course he brought it into existence when he organized the jewish church okay is the life yes then they didn't do what they were supposed to do mm -hmm. gave them a bill of divorcement in what year 1834 sorry huh? sorry uh, 84. sorry he, he gave the Jewish church, the Jewish woman, her bill of divorcement in 34 AD. Yes. Then he brought the apostolic church into existence, right? Yes. When did he give the apostolic church her bill of divorcement? 1843. 1843. 
Then after 1843, he brought another woman into existence to represent him and do what she was supposed to do. And yeah. that woman, this woman is called a woman or is it called a virgin? A woman. Notice he just told you in the book, Great Controversy, that the symbol of the church after 1844 stopped being a woman and now the church became the virgin. Why I said uh, a woman, uh, why I said a woman elder is that the virgin qualities, I don't know, I'm looking for them still. Because, remember, you know, it said that she wasn't defiled with women. So women were not supposed to have any control over her. But today we see differently. We are now patronizing with women, again, defiling ourselves with women. But I suppose that's another story. But the, so, looking, looking at it biblically from what it is said, it, is, it says that from 1844, the church became a virgin. Well, the church didn't become a virgin. He brought the, the remember virgin. The woman, the woman still exists because the fallen Protestant churches still still women. Yeah, yeah. But yes, he's saying for the too. virgin, he said, "Look, don't yeah. you get yourself involved in what they're doing?" Okay. Hmm. With, with these other women. No, no, no. The woman that is one woman. Okay. Now the other woman is. The Jewish church, he said, now, don't you get yourself wrapped up in what they're doing? Don't you get yourself wrapped up in keeping the feast days? Don't you get yourself wrapped up in going over there to Jerusalem? Don't you get yourself wrapped up into, you know, all the things that they did, okay? So when he said women here, he meant the two women, the two previous women. Oh, oh. yes. Okay. Okay. okay, 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 okay. Now I understand. I thought when you said women, I'm thinking about the combination of the apostolic church because the apostolic church is a combination of, of, of a set of churches. I no, thought no. that is what it meant, but I now realize that we are talking about now the two women that came out. The one from the other. Yeah, okay. Now I follow you. Now he's saying, no, 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 don't you look at them. Leave these two women, women alone. alone because i had to give them a bill of what divorce divorcement ah uh, oh my goodness all kinds of wounds are coming up now it's confused or confusing well because now i'm realizing as you said that that i give them a bill of divorce but you had to leave these women yeah they were there existing but you had to leave them alone right you know, coming into our church, I've had dear Adventist brothers, they're saying, well, you have to call his name Yahweh. You have to call his name El. So they're getting into that was with the first woman, Hebrew. Well, you, in order to really understand the scriptures, you got to know the Hebrew, okay? So to call him Yahshua or to call him Yahweh, no, it's not right. Oh, wait a minute. No, conscientiously let those who call him, but God says, Leave that what? Woman. Leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Because remember, in that church, they taught you unless you spoke Hebrew, unless you did this, unless you did this, unless you wore this, unless you wore that, unless you kept the feast days, unless mm -hmm. you did this, unless you went to Jerusalem. And in, in, in our church, do you know we've been taught Oh, if you go over to the Jordan River and you get baptized in the what? Jordan River. Something special is going to what? Happen to you. But that's a part of the what church? Of the Jewish church. Of the Jewish church. God says, leave those things alone. What did the angel say? To them, when they came to look for Jesus on the first day of the week, he's not here. But we, oh, oh, we, we take Holy Land crew, you know, Holy Land trips. And he says, but I told you 
Elijah, I told you, Dawn, and I told you, Gray, and Carlene. I just told you that there is no such what? Yes. <laughs> Come on. I told you that there is no holy land located on this earth anymore. See, Israel over in the Middle East is not the holy land. The only holy land that you and I are to look for is the holy city, New Jerusalem, that's coming down out of God, out of heaven, okay? See, that land over there is not holy because for one group of people to kill another group of people, I mean, sure, they may worship Allah, but that's not a holy act <laughs> for me to kill an Arab because he worships Allah. See, there's nothing holy about that. And that's what God is trying to say. And we were not to get caught up into those kind of experiences. We were not to do that in our walk with God. We were not to divert the people's attention back to this earthly foolishness that's going on. And that's what's happening. It's just like the, our, just like the, the Mormon brothers, they're teaching people that if you go to Salt Lake City, there's a temple there. God says, no, 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 no. Leave all this earthly foolishness alone because it's all going to burn up. It's all going to pass away. And we were supposed to turn the people's attention to the heavenly. That's why he allowed Jerusalem to be destroyed in 70 AD. Because always everything on earth was always supposed to be just a lesson book to point me to the heavenly. And that's our job and our mission. And as we close out this morning, <laughs> that's where your reading assignment is going to be. Go back there to Leviticus. Leviticus 21 talks about a correct understanding of the virgin and of the bride, okay? And then you have it in chapter, I think it's chapter 25, all right? Are there any other questions or comments before we stop? Well, we still didn't get to the beer yet, but we'll have to take that up another time. Yeah, As we'll pick that why, up. Yeah, why the virgins, why the, well, the, why the well, ribs are in the mouth of the bear and not on the, in the mouth of the lion or not okay. in the mouth of the leopard or in the fierce beast? Right. Well, why see, in the bear and not something you, else? Before you get to closer. the bear, before you can get to the bear in Daniel, why the three ribs are in the mouth of the bear, you want to understand what are the ribs all about, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I could I oh. understood I understood that, but I got more information this morning. Thank you so much. You are quite welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So who would like to have closing prayer before we close up? Go ahead. You can have closing prayer, sister. Elijah. Yes, ma'am. Morning. Morning. I just want to ask a question. Maybe when we pick up the next time, you were talking about the father sending the servant to get the bride. All right. And my mm -hmm. question is, how do you talk to the young people concerning this fact now? Where, where you remember well, now we would. Well, first of all, you when you talk to young people, first of all, you want to talk to the young people and let them know that, first of all, you're a learner. You want to let them know about your mistakes, your misunderstanding. You see, normally what we make a, a mistake as a Christian, we go in there appearing to be self-righteous rather than saying, hey, to the young person, hey, I see you making the same what? Mistake. <laughs> and I made a whole lot of what? Mistake. Mistake. And all of us have. So that's the first step in understanding those things as you talk to young people. And you want to start where it starts in the book of Genesis. Okay. So go ahead. Cause I've got, uh, I've got to go ahead and quit now. Cause I got a very dear friend of mine. His name is Bob Bates and uh, he's the billing inspector. And he's been working with me on this edition. And he told me he will be here at 730 this really? morning. And he is here. You so have I'm, a minute. I'm, we will pick yeah, it up on next time. Thanks. Thanks. Mr. Hamilton, just pray to close. Thanks as you're on the there. Oh no, no, Bob is not.
he's not the type of person that's anxious or anything, but I just wanted to let you know what we got to do. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but Elisha, we will pick it up next time. Okay, okay we'll, get to, we'll, we'll deal with that next time, okay? Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Holy Heavenly Father, righteous God, we come in your presence. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you for the breath in our body. Last night we went and sleep, Lord, and you send your angels at excellent strength in our home, around our home, up and down our streets, around our loved ones, our children. And Father, we praise you and we thank you. This morning, Lord, we recognize the lessons that were hidden. You, you, you know, Lord, and I thank you. You're calling the virgin to get awake so that our eyes will be open and our ears will be clean so that we will hear the trumpet. We will see the light, Lord. Fathers, we go through the study. Wake us up, shake us up, Lord, so that we will not only get it, but we will tell others. Lord, we ask for a blessing upon each one of us as we go through our day. Let our minds stay within you and Lord, guide us. Lord, direct us and make us the people, the virgin who are calling forth in this time. So Lord, what we fail to ask, fail not to grant it and bless our dear pastor so that he would bless us and we would bless others. Lord, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. Hey, be on to you now. All right, then. Thank you. Have a great week. Everybody. Have a great week. Been, we've been doing this since come on ah since since this morning